Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're doing some TIG welding aluminum today, a whole bunch of it. We're going to be running some beads on a corner like this to kind of put some heat into the part. Then we're going to stack beads one after another after another to build up the part. One of the common repairs in a lot of different industries, aerospace, automotive, heavy equipment, is dimensional restoration. And that basically a lot of times is just padding beads to restore a dimension, to build up a worn area or a mismachined area or something like that. That's what I'm doing today. I'm going to relate how the doing a skill exercise of padding beads is almost just like that. This is a scrap part that was mismachined. And in fact, the production parts were, were a cast aluminum part and then final machined. This particular one was a prototype. It's not cast, but it welded awfully dirty. We'll talk a little bit about welding cast aluminum, padding beads, preheat, whatever else comes up. Let's do it. This piece right here is a scrap part that resembles a whole lot of parts that I've fixed over the years. This is how I started a side hustle in my garage, a side welding business, fixing mismachined parts, misdrilled holes, and things like that. This is a scrap part. Again, it's not a real thing, but it's very similar. So the first thing I would do is get it good and clean. That will help with porosity, but also a, a preheat also helps with porosity. That slows the cooling rate, gives any impurities a, a chance to outgas as it solidifies. I'm only going to 150 or so on the preheat. I'm going to use strategic bead placement to help with the heat also. I'm going to run, run a bead around the corners that won't take much amperage. And by the time I get through with that, there'll be some heat soaked into the part and the, the layers of beads will go a lot better. 4047 filler metal has got 12% silicon and it's got a lower melt point than 4043 and wets out better. I like to use it for castings, but also on a job like this where I'm striving to get a porosity free weld after final machine. It's always good to do a wipe down of your rods too. They can look clean, but not really be very clean at all. I'm using the ESOB Rebel 205 today, the ACDC model that does AC TIG aluminum. So we'll just select AC TIG here. Yep, I'm going to be pushing this thing hard today. I'm maxed out at 205 amps. I'm not getting in deep into the uh, advanced settings like amplitude or anything like that. I'm going to bump my AC cleaning down to 65. That's a little lower than I would normally go, but again, I'm, I'm shooting for porosity free weld here. I'm going to be full pedal for a whole lot of this, a whole lot of this repair. I'll be pushing the machine and the air-cooled torch super hard. The machine comes with a 150 amp air-cooled torch, and so I'm just going to select this large diameter gas lens collet body. It's a little bit more mass. Well, all that extra copper and brass will help it. A little bit of a heat sink. Also, a wedge collet is going to help. A, a, a regular split copper collet. I'll just get that thing so hot it would probably uh, corkscrew on me. So that's why I'm selecting this today. And again, it's going to give me just a little bit extra duty cycle with the more mass. A number eight cup here. Normally I would probably use a number six for aluminum, but again, I want that wider cleaning action because it's, I'm, I'm sort of treating this like it was a casting. And it's kind of welding nasty like it was a casting. This is what I would do. I would do a little, sort of a little cleaning pass like this. Kind of sneak up on it. Let the let the thing puddle nice and cleanly. Make sure it puddles cleanly before I give it much amperage at all. And then it should, you know, it's wetting out and welding fairly clean. Doesn't look like there's any porosity in that. Or if there is, it'll be very minimal. If it doesn't puddle cleanly, I back off the pedal and just let the cleaning action work until it does puddle cleanly. All right, one more side here, and this will give a little bit different perspective. Same thing, I'm just going to sneak up on it, not puddle right away, dance that cleaning action around a minute, walk it along that edge, make sure that nothing's gonna, nothing crappy is going to cook out of there and create porosity. I'm taking it all the way up here to the corner. You can see the, the cleaning action just dance around. And now I should be puddling, puddling pretty clean here. I'm not going to proceed unless I do puddle clean. And what I mean by that is I want the puddle to be shiny and wet looking without a bunch of crud floating around in it or, you know, a mushroom patch or whatever. And it looks pretty clean. So that has a lot to do with the cleaning action on the AC balance, but it also has to do with how well you clean the metal and your argon shielding. Again, that's the reason I chose the 8 gas lens. 
And that's a pretty wide swath of cleaning action there, and that's, that's kind of what I want. That's kind of what I want on any casting. Here, I'm doing the same thing. I'm letting the, uh, letting the cleaning action dance a little bit. Not completely full pedal here when I'm puddling on these corners. I will be on the flat part of it. I'm going slow, using just enough amperage to the puddle it and keep the puddle clean. Every now and then I see a little bit of trash float around, but it's, it's pretty clean. And again, you can see that brown edge of the uh, cleaning action there. This stuff is just cooking out. Here you can see that brown and black area. I don't know if it was uh, leftover cutting fluid that soaked in there from the machining operation or what. It's very much welding like a casting, actually. Okay, I'm starting to build up just a little bit of heat in this thing. I've got one more long run to go. By that time, it ought to be up close to 200. So let's do that. Torch is actually holding up pretty well here, but I'm not full pedal yet. Torch is not even really getting warm. It will. See that stuff baking out of there? That's why I don't puddle it right away. And that's a technique I use on dirty aluminum, oil soap castings, you name it. On any kind of aluminum, I just want to make sure I get a nice, shiny, clean puddle before I proceed. Notice that I've got a tapered tip on the electrode also. Forgot to mention that, really. That's mainly for good, crisp starts, because I'm not, I'm not using much amperage here, especially on the very corners when I light up. I don't want the arc going everywhere. Now, later on, when I start welding bead after bead, and I'm just kind of slamming the foot pedal, a nice rounded tip would work fine. I'd like to talk now about how this is so similar to a skill exercise that I call the aluminum drill, which is basically just padding aluminum beads. I did this video a good while back, and the same thing, I, I place beads strategically. I run a bead around the edge first, and that was mainly because it was there, but also mainly to put heat into the part. This is a really good little exercise here, too. you got to watch your edges. You can't just go crazy with the heat. And then after you get heat into the part, you start stacking bead after bead. And this is time to test out your AC balance settings, test out different angles of the electrode, whether you like a rounded tip or a, a slightly tapered tip, test your gas flow out, your AC frequency, swap hands, feed, ro feed rod with different hands. This will get your wire feeder hand up to speed quicker than anything I know of. Back to the part now. You might notice a little forward and back type motion here. And I'm, I'm just doing a little bit of a coaxing the puddle along. And because this, this has got like a groove on here, instead of running several stringers, I'm just sort of doing a little bit of a weave motion too to tie everything together. I didn't get an arc shot of that, but you can see the, the bead here. Now my temp is up over 200. Things are going pretty nice. Now I'm full pedal. And the part's really nice and hot. So I'm going to start contouring here and just sort of placing beads where it looks like it needs it to get a final dimension machine off. And once I get everything kind of squared off, then I'll just start stacking beads just like I did in the aluminum drill clips earlier. And now the torch is starting to get a little bit warm on me. Not too, too hot to hold just yet, but I can feel it. All right, check it out again here. This is the arc dancing with that cleaning action, cooking away the crud, the, the cutting fluids or whatever were sort of soaked in here. You can see that, that arc cleaning action doing its thing. And again, I let it do its thing. I always do this on castings or dirty aluminum. I let it, I let it do its thing before I just puddle right away. I find that helps on getting less porosity. Now I'm attempting to stack each bead exactly halfway over the previous bead or maybe even a little bit overlap uh, so that I don't have any any low valleys or anything that won't machine off. That's my goal anyway. I'm probably not going to be perfect at that, but we'll see when it's done. A lot of this is just lather, rinse, repeat here. Looks re relatively the same, but let me just show you one more time the starting of the bead of this next bead. I'm going to again use that cleaning action to let it dance. And you can see, again, brown and black stuff cooking away. And then I get to a point where I know I can go ahead and puddle and I get a nice clean, shiny puddle. Now I can proceed. Taking it nice and slow. 
if it were a little bit cleaner metal, I, I would, and, and if I had uh, more amperage. And incidentally, I would probably add a little helium to the argon here. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm testing out a machine. I want to see what it does with straight argon. Now it's getting hot. I could stop and let it cool, but then my part would cool off. So I'm just going to keep on going and uh, see what happens. The wedge collet is definitely <laughs> important in a case like this because uh, if, you, if you get a torch so hot that you can barely hold on to it, a regular split copper collet will get super soft. It'll get annealed and then next time you tighten down on it, it can really corkscrew on you. Well, I hope you can see that this is so much like just that aluminum drill, padding beads. It's just like the scale exercise that you think is boring and you think is not getting you anywhere, but it really is like wax on, wax off stuff with Mr. Miyagi. You think you're not getting anywhere and then all of a sudden you've got skills. So whether if you're in school and doing, whether it's TIG, stick mig and the instructors having you pad beads get all you can out of it because it is a it's a very fundamental skill this aluminum particularly again to repeat the reason i like to do it is just because there's no cleaning there's very little prep and there's no cleaning in between passes there's no having to wire brush it's very efficient and the skills you learn here transfer very well to real life work dimensional restoration and aerospace and lots of other industries all right, we're about to finish this one up here. We'll take a look at it. A couple more things to talk about, though. This is just how I feed filler rod. Usually, on a job like this, I'm feeding a lot, and this gives me a longer stroke to, to feed longer, longer runs of rod. This is just the way I do it. There's many different ways. And here's another view of the way I do it. I alternately grip it between my palm and thumb and then push it with my two fingers. All right, that looks pretty decent. Except you can see there are some little low places here, here and there. And so one way to, to fix that would be to just run some beads sort of sideways. In which case I wouldn't be worrying about packing a whole lot of filler in there. I'm just kind of a smoothing pass. You know, good, good rule of thumb when you're building up something to, to be machined is, when you think you've got enough on there, put a little bit more. All right? Hey, if you're interested in any of the stuff that I use in this video, like the large diameter gas lens kit, the new TIG gloves that I recently added, the TIG Finger or TIG Finger XL, or the clear 8 Furic cups, you can learn more by visiting weldmonger.com. That's my online store. That's how I pay for these videos. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.